Father Costas and Deacon Scott enter the church. Thank you. Our opening song is number 709 for all the saints. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you give the poor in spirit the kingdom of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you comfort those who mourn. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servant of our servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of my name. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I always feel privileged to be able to preach on all saints. I was ordained two days before the Feast of All Saints, and the first time that I was asked to assist at Mass and preach was on this solemnity. So this 
marks for me an anniversary, an anniversary of my service in the diaconate. This year, it is 10 years. All Saints Day, the day on which Catholics celebrate all the saints, known and unknown, is a surprisingly old feast. It's mentioned in the Apostles' Creed, which is the creed that's very likely earlier than the Creed at Nicaea. The Creed at Nicaea was 325 and appears to expand upon the points given in the Apostles' Creed. And the Apostles' Creed mentions the communion of the saints already. It arose out of the Christian tradition of celebrating the martyrdom of the saints on their anniversary of their death. When martyrs increased during the persecutions of the late Roman Empire, local dioceses instituted a common feast day in order to ensure that all the martyrs, known and unknown, were properly honored. They didn't want to leave any out. And here is an immediate connection with our readings today. The final beatitude speaks of those who endure persecution. In many ways, All Saints Day is like a Catholic Memorial Day. Our saints are not just those, though, who were killed, who were martyred. After the age of persecution had ended, other holy individuals were added to the list of the saints. They were those whose practice of Christian virtue served as an example of discipleship. Again, our readings today help us to know what that virtue is, what that Christian discipleship should look like. The Beatitudes become a list of the qualities of the saints. Now, you could assign all of the Beatitudes to any of the saints, but some Beatitudes stand out as particularly um, uh, descriptive of a particular saint. Blessed are those who mourn, perhaps St. Monica, uh, uh, St. Augustine's mother. Blessed are the meek, St. Francis de Sales. Blessed are the merciful. Think of a saint who showed great mercy to those in need. I, I like to list Mother Teresa of Calcutta, St. Teresa of Calcutta now. Blessed are the peacemakers. I think of two women in particular. I think of Elizabeth of Portugal, who went back and forth between the royal families and brought peace to them. And I, I think of St. Catherine of Siena, who brought peace to the Catholic Church when there was a person claiming to be pope in France and a person claiming to be pope in Rome. Catherine of Siena went to the one in France and said, enough of this. And she brought unity back to the Catholic Church. So peacemakers. The current date of November 1 was instituted by Pope Gregory III, who was pope between 731 and 741. And he did that when he consecrated a chapel to all the martyrs in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. How many of you have been to Rome? How many of you have been to St. Peter's? Keep your hands up, quite a few of you. You visited the very place where in the West, the universal feast of all saints came to be. Now, first it was just in the Diocese of Rome, but later Pope Gregory IV, and he was Pope between 827 and 844, he extended the feast to the entire church. So the entire church has been celebrating all saints for 1,200 years, almost 1,300 years, 1,300 years. But we know, again, the origins of thinking about the saints is mentioned in the Apostles' Creed, and that takes us back possibly to the end of the first century. So this is a very ancient feast indeed. The saints are important because they teach us that our home is in heaven and that to be united with Christ is our life. They teach us that love is stronger than death and that love brings life for our God is love. Father, uh, excuse me now, Bishop Robert Barron 
dares to say even that the playful modern custom, it's a purely American thing, of wearing symbols of death during Halloween, he dares to propose is perhaps accidentally, because people doing Halloween have no idea, but it's perhaps accidentally theologically correct. Why? Because by poking fun at death, we are confidently expressing our faith in the eternal life granted to us by our Lord who has conquered death. Now, how many trick-or-treaters actually know that? Not too many, but maybe we can enlighten them. And I always like to say that I wish the American secular holiday of Halloween, I wish that Catholics during that time would dress up as saints you know, get their children to dress up as St. Francis or St. Catherine of Siena or Mother Teresa of Calcutta or Maximilian Kolbe. And then as they trick-or-treated, when people asked, because people always ask, are you a witch? Are you this? Are you that? They could say, who are you? And that person could say, I'm St. Francis. I'm Catherine of Siena. And begin to explain a little bit about where this, where this holiday actually came from, what it actually celebrates. It actually celebrates the saints. The church believes that the apostles and Christ's martyrs, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary and those others who demonstrated steadfast Christian virtue, are closely united with us in Christ. Through their merits and intercessory prayers, we are assisted on our Christian journey because we ask for their prayers. We journey together, therefore, not only with those on earth, but also with the assistance of those in heaven. Part of the meaning of being Catholic is that we are universal and united, even in the sense of being a church that extends not just over the earth, but to heaven that there is a connection between heaven and earth. For this reason, the church includes the saints in every mass. The saints will be invoked at every celebration of the Eucharist. Listen for them tonight in the prayer over the offerings. This is what you will hear. May these offerings we bring in honor of your saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so may we experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. You'll hear that tonight in the Mass. The saints are also invoked when Christians receive the sacrament of confirmation. You who have been confirmed, raise your hand if you've received the sacrament of confirmation. Okay, most of you. Almost all of you. And if you need the sacrament of confirmation, come see me. When you received the sacrament of confirmation, you took on a new name, did you not? What names did you take at confirmation? What are your confirmation names, your Christian names? What's your Christian name? Joseph. Joseph. Oh, what a great one in the year of St. Joseph. Somebody else, tell me your, your confirmation name. Call it out. Maria. Maria. Very good. Someone else? Leona. Leona. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Beautiful. Bill O'Brien, what's her confirmation name? Peter. So why do we take the names of saints? We hope that they will pray for us and share with us their virtues, and we hope to become like them. One who takes the name of Peter wants to be a better fisherman, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so together we here today, with all the saints in heaven, form the communion of the saints, the very thing mentioned in the Apostles' Creed, dating from a very early time. We form the communion of the saints, the Church of Christ, a church that is both on earth and in heaven. And by the way, we know this. We know that the church extends right up into heaven because we heard it in our second reading, did we not? Actually, in our first reading from the book of Revelation, 
After this, I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every race and nation, every race and people, and every tongue. Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? John asks the angel. Actually, he's probably talking to the Lord at this point because we hear, my Lord, you are the one who knows. And so the Lord Jesus rep replies to him, these are the ones who have survived the great time of distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So we hear about this church in heaven in the book of Revelation. The solemnity of all saints then is important because it teaches us who we are together. And who are we together? The unity in Christ of all the redeemed. The unity in Christ of all the redeemed. That's who we are together. Another name for that is the Catholic Church. Where are we going? Heaven. And what are we called to be? Saints. I just want to finish with a little quote from Pope Francis. Somebody gave me this wonderful calendar with quotes from Pope Francis. And here's what Pope Francis has to say about being a saint. A saint is a witness to the gospel, one who has encountered Jesus, who knows him, or better, who feels known by him, recognized, respected, loved, forgiven. And this encounter has deeply touched that one and filled her or him with a new joy which gives life a new meaning. And this new meaning shines through and it's passed on to others. That's what it means to be a saint and that's what we all want. Amen? Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Maker of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Father for all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, be God and not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from them. And by his Holy Spirit, was the time of the Virgin Mary, and then he came down. For our sake, he was crucified and was crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He was ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We unite our prayers with those of all the saints who have gone before us. For all those saints who have endured suffering for the sake of the name 
And for all of those who preach the good news of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For all of those working to bring peace and reconciliation to this world, let us pray to the Lord. For all of those who mourn, especially those who have suffered the loss of someone from COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. That we who are united with the saints to worship God in this Eucharist may also daily offer to God our lives, made holy by prayer and charity, let us pray to the Lord. And that all the faithful departed, especially the many who are listed in our parish on these wonderful banners, may join the angels and the saints before God's throne to praise and adore him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. God of peace, you bless us in your mercy. Fortify us also as we seek to do your will. For this we pray through Christ our Lord. dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May 
May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and I grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hastening as pilgrims, advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you gave us in our frailty both strength and a good example. And so, we glorify you with the multitude of, of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when his supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As 
we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread it throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord and the Son of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that I should enter. 
For all who are participating in this Mass at home, let us now pray the spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oración espiritual de comunión. Creo, Jesús mío, que estás real y verdaderamente en el cielo y en el santísimo sacramento del altar. Os amo sobre todas las cosas y deseo vivamente recibirte dentro de mi alma. Pero no pudiendo hacerlo ahora sacramentalmente, venid al menos espiritualmente a mi corazón. Y como si ya os hubiese recibido, os abrazo y me uno del todo a ti. Señor, no permitas que jamás me aparte de ti. Amén.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderfully in all your saints, we implore your grace, your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our head for the solemn blessing. May God, the glory and joy of the saints, who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, so that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you all, and I wish you a good night. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Our closing song is 607, sing with all the saints and glory, two verses.